from the New York City area, welcome to the Badass Counseling Show, where the master badass himself, Sven Erlinson, takes you deep and gives balm for the soul, baby. Hello, hello, hello. It's great to have you here. This is the Badass Counseling Show. I am Sven Erlinson, the host. Where are you today? Are you in Dedham, Mass. or Delaware County, Oklahoma? If you're in Newfoundland or Brisbane, Vilnius, Lithuania, or Lake Victoria, or maybe Lake Pontchartrain or Lake Josephine in lovely New Brighton, Minnesota, wherever you are joining the show, we are delighted to have you here. I am joined in studio by KC over in the booth. Hello, KC, and Rob the Rocket right next to me. Hello, Howdy. Rob. How are you, Sven? You look wonderful as always. And uh, I got to ask, Rob, have you had any earworms, any song earworms recently? Uh, yeah, I hate to admit it because I'm giving away my age, but there were a couple of Bobby Darren songs that were popular around the early 60s. Yes. One was Mac the Knife, and wow, the other was Beyond that. the Sea. And there was a movie by that name about Bobby Darren's life. But anyway. Beyond the Sea or Mac the Knife? Beyond the Sea was the name of the Bobby Darren biopic. How about so, that? Sorry for being old, but you know, it works for me. You know what's interesting about that word? I always thought it was pronounced biopic. But maybe, maybe it is because I'm myopic, and no. so it rhymed. And that's what I thought, but no, I, I'm quite certain biopic is accurate. Anyway, uh, little Bobby Darren in the head today. All right. Well, Rob, uh, we're taking two guests today, aren't we? Anthony and Clara. What can you tell us about Anthony and Clara? Well, Anthony wrote in and he said, this is tough to admit, but why am I both hurt by stares and embarrassed by behavior by going out with my Down syndrome brother and my parents? I love them. I do. Why do I resent my mother when she burdens me by his care at her death? A lot going on. I know. And then Clara wrote in, that's Clara, that's the Doctor Who pronunciation, or Clara. Hi, Sven, I've recently bought your book. My depression has lessened up some, but I still struggle with outbursts of anger that I can't crack. I'm the CNA on your lightning round that aspired to be a baker. I'm also the woman who lost her fiancé in a car crash on a different lightning round. I've journaled about it, but at times I still feel angry, lost, etc., I'm happy with my career now, but still have some things inside that I can't seem to crack. My uncle touched me inappropriately when I was young, and my aunt believes it was an accident. My mom and grandma used to make comments about my eating habits and my weight when I was little. I lost my dad to cancer when I was 15, and I had a miscarriage of my first child in 2012 when I was 19. I feel like I'm stuck in my healing process and don't know how to go deeper. Thank you for all you do. Anthony and Clara, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Uh, for our listeners, Anthony and Clara do not know each other. They just met each other for the first time right before the show. Um, Anthony, I want to start with you, and we're going to be right over to you in about uh, two jerks of a lamb's tail, as mom would say when we were young. Anthony, I got to say, uh, saying that you're hurt by your the stares you get by having a Down syndrome brother and the embarrassed that you are by behavior, isn't that a disabled sibling no-no to say things like that, to admit that out loud? Of course. And how does that make you feel to even say that, let alone think that? Uh, I feel like, well, I've been, ha I've almost had a, I had a panic attack Sunday night when you guys told me I was going to be on the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fair. That's fair. But it's honest. I'm being, you know, I, I got your book in May, no, April, uh, March, and I finished it in May and I've been uncovering a lot and journaling like crazy. And, uh, this, this is something that came up. That's, I realized has been something that's been bothering me since I'm a kid, I guess. Wow. And you said it, I asked you how it feels. You said it, it's honest, but you didn't answer how it feels. <laughs> It feels like I'm a piece of shit, to be honest with you. Terrible and person. Out of immense guilt? Guilt, sorrow, sadness. Sorrow. Uh, Why does, uh, what do you feel the sorrow about that causes you to feel like a piece of shit? What's the sorrow? The sorrow, I guess, would be I should accept my brother, which I guess I sh it should be that I should accept him how he is. Right? And yet, and so why does that cause sorrow? I guess I feel bad that I feel the way I do. Like, I, I shouldn't feel like... Shouldn't. Ah, shouldn't. 
You know what's interesting about feelings, though? There are no right or wrong feelings. Actions, words, sure, that's separate. We can be sort of judged on that, but a feeling is just a feeling. If I'm out back yeah. working, you know, with some wood and stuff, and I'm pounding the ha- nail with a hammer, and I chew in my, I hit my thumb, you're going to hear a whole lot flying out of me, a lot of rage, fuck, 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 God damn it, blah, 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 and some tears coming out of my eyes. It's a natural response. Those feelings are a yeah. natural response. <laughs> Couldn't it be argued that that's a natural response to going through this situation? Yeah. Yeah. Do you recall that chapter of the book, the golden child chapter, where I talk about the SNCC, the special needs child, and being the sibling of a special needs child? Yes, and I knew that chapter was going to be tough, and it was. <laughs> what was the hardest part? Um, just bringing up memories and feelings from when he was born till up till today. Actually, honestly, um, he's 21, I'm 30. He graduated his school that he goes to this past... Uh, year obviously just now Mm -hmm. and i never went to any of his school events uh ever until this past winter i went to his winter concert and his graduation and i'm glad i went and i felt bad that i never went and up until now and yet you never went and what's the real reason you never went also i was it's uh you resented the fuck out of him didn't you that and I, I, it's hard to see. You see kids, and then you feel like a jerk off. Like I, I don't have it this bad because you see kids that are so worse than him there, and it's it's a lot, you know. And what it, what what would it take? And I'm coming over to you next, Clara. What would it take, Anthony, for you to have your feelings without shaming yourself for having the feelings? They're just fucking feelings. They are a natural response, a normal response to an abnormal set of circumstances. What would it take for you to give yourself permission and to not shame yourself for just having a feeling? I don't know. I really don't. Is it possible? I'm getting there. Okay, good I'm getting there. Good man. Is it possible that it's okay? It's okay. I'm learning. Thanks to you, I've had, this just happened like maybe a few days ago. Instead of feeling shame for even things that happened when I was a kid, I'm starting to feel compassion for myself. And I think about my kids. This is a thing that's changed a lot. I think about my kids and say, "Would how would I treat my kids in this situation? And it's usually always how I should treat myself and not. And the biggest thing that you would do with one of your kids, if they were a sibling of a special needs child, the biggest thing you would do with the sibling child is what? In one sentence or less, what's the biggest thing you'd do? Show them they, they matter. Just as important, just, just as, as much important. energy, right? Because that special yeah. needs child can suck, suck the, the, light suck out of the, the <laughs> oxygen out of a room. That's exactly right. Yep. Clara, I want to come over to you. You make the comment in your write-up, you know, uh, you aspire to be a baker and you're a CNA certified nursing assistant, right? CNA? Yes. Nurse, yes. Okay. And you lost your fiance in a car crash. Um, you've journaled a lot, but I still feel angry and lost and uh, I'm happy with my career now, but still have some things inside. I can't seem to crack. And in the very next sentence, you say, my uncle touched me inappropriately when I was young and my aunt believes it was an accident. Uh, just for clarification's sake, Clara, when you say he touched you inappropriately, what are we talking about here? And the reason I ask is because it's a setup for the next question about what your fucking aunt had to say in response. To the degree you feel comfortable answering, and if you don't, that's okay. When you say he touched you inappropriately, what do you mean? His hand down my pants. <laughs> okay. And your aunt, presumably your uncle's wife, right? Mm-hmm. Same, same. Okay. Not a different aunt. Calls it an accident. How old were you yes. when uh, she said this to you? Um, it was actually a few months ago. I finally had enough courage to confront her or tell her what happened and she that was her response was it must have been an accident and how old were you when he did this to you this disgusting thing to you i'm not 100 percent sure but i believe i was about six about six. somewhere around there and mm-hmm. he put his hand down your pants and okay and she believes she said she said it was an accident i believe it was an accident do you recall what she said because of the way I told it, because I t- said that, um, you know, he was tickling me. I fell to my knees, and then that's when he put his hand in my pants. She said that it, it must have been an accident because 
we were just, he was just goofing around with me. Yeah, that's disgusting. M <laughs> must have been an accident. There is no realm of possibility wherein that was an accident. Right. Let me ask you, I know this is a fucked up question. Who do you hate more, him or her? Her. <laughs> right? Yeah. And put in one sentence, for those who may not understand that, put in one sentence the crime that she committed against you. She betrayed me. Bingo. Why do you think she did it? Because she has to protect her husband. And by protecting her husband, why does she have to protect her husband? What's the fear? If I don't protect my husband, what? Or if I admit this is true about my husband, what? Then her whole marriage and life is a lie. <laughs> Furthermore, if she ever confronted her husband about it and, and defended you, her whole life falls apart. So she chose herself. She didn't choose herself over you. No. She chose herself over a six-year-old girl who was molested by a grown man. That happened to be you, but not you today, whatever age you are now, 31-ish, I'm guessing. She didn't just mm -hmm. she didn't commit it against you today. Yes, it is, but she committed against a six-year-old girl. I'm gonna protect myself from your bullshit little story, little girl. Fuck you. Of course you feel betrayed. Let me ask you this though. You say in your write-up, right before that, you said, I'm happy with my career now, but I still have some things inside that I can't seem to crack. And then you tell the story of the uncle. Now, it may be unrelated, but I'm curious. Is it unrelated? Is that what you can't crack? Or is it something else? I'm not sure. I mean, I've journaled about the whole situation. I wrote a letter to him telling him how much I hate him and to her since I confronted her. Good. I don't know. Okay. Uh, that's well, what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Then let's set that story aside and we can come back to it. Let's set that one aside. You go on to say mom and grandma used to make comments about my eating habits and my weight when I was little. Okay. So you weren't safe with your uncle. Obviously, you aren't safe with your aunt. You weren't safe around your mom because she'd make comments. She'd belittle you and make you feel bad. Grandma wasn't safe. Sometimes the grandparent is the safety zone. Clearly it wasn't for gra with you, with grandma. I lost my dad to cancer when I was 15. Good Lord, girl. And all right, so dad passed away when you're 15. Mom and grandma are attackers. Uncle definitely doesn't feel safe. Who in your entire life made you feel safe? I mean, my mom did at times but not when she was talking about my weight. And my, my dad did too when I was little. And I have a sister and my sister was, she kind of gave me tough love. <laughs> she thinks with her head and I think with my heart. So mm. Mm. that was pretty much it. <laughs> Fair enough. Let me ask you this then. Going down to that last sentence where you say, you talk about the miscarriage of your first child in 2012 when you were 19. And then you say, I feel like I'm stuck in my healing process and don't know how to go deeper. Of your entire story, your entire life, your entire everything. And just spitball it. And if you don't have an answer, that's okay. What do you most fear touching? What's the um, scariest part? My uncle and also my fiance passing away. And the scariest part about looking at the uncle story inside is what? Is it, is it a fear of actually confronting him, which you don't have to do in order to heal? Or is it a fear of going into that story and, and seeing the story and re-experiencing the trauma? Or what is it about the whole uncle piece that is so scary? I guess I just want to figure out how to get over it because he's still very present in my life. And I mean, he'll come every Saturday to my house and knock on my door and I just don't answer. I have to ask, why is he knocking on your door every Saturday? I don't know. He, I have a little girl and he wants to visit with her or visit with me and like everything is fine and I don't want to talk to him. I just want to be left alone. Okay. And amen, hallelujah, and thank God. You you said you have a little girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that keeping that door shut is the right fucking decision on that. Um, how do I get over it? He's still very much in my life, you said. And what is the scariest part about confronting 
the story and looking more at the story of the death of your fiance? It's very painful. <laughs> What's the most absolute painful part that he's gone and you're alone? Is it the death of the dream that you had for the two of you? Is it uh, what? What's the most painful part? That he's gone. That's and and maybe also the death of the dream as well. Hmm. What was the dream? What was it? And we were going to get married and... Mm -hmm. We were supposed to grow old together, so. Hmm. Did you have a, a special place you were planning on living or a house you dreamed of having? We just kind of always talked about, like, getting a house in the country and mm. um, having a wraparound porch to watch the sunset oh, come up. Oh, yeah. I love that. And sunrise go down. I love that dream. Wraparound porch. I love wraparound porches. Me too. <laughs> Por porch swing? Yes. Yes. Or or rocking chairs. Or rock. way. All right. All right. Going <laughs> going real old. We're we're going to eighty early. Let's enjoy those rocking chairs. I love it. Love it. A little lemonade, yeah. maybe a beer or a cigar at the end of the day, something like that. That's just me. I'm sure you don't smoke cigars on the porch in a rocking chair. Maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> um all right. The scariest and most painful part. And you said it. There you go. Okay, so that's a start. Now I want to come back over to you, Anthony. I put Clara on the hot seat. What's the scariest part or the most painful part, scariest part about what's still in front of you regarding your shame, regarding your brother, regarding your healing? What's the scariest part, Anthony? My parents are older now. They're 60, both of them respectively. And uh, my mother's not in the best of health. She's diabetic. She doesn't eat well. She likes to smoke cigarettes. Mm. Um, my brother's diabetic as well. But, um, and my father, to be honest with you, he's a great guy. I love him, but he came from Italy when he was 22, 23. All he knows really how to ever do is, was go to work, come home and sit down and be fed. <laughs> and honestly, I fear I have two little girls of my own. I'm divorced. I live an hour away from them. And it's like, I don't know how I'd be able to juggle taking care of my father, my brother, God forbid something happens to my mom. Because she's put that on me since I was young. I remember maybe being 10 and her saying, you know, don't ever put him in a home. You can't put him in a home. And I wouldn't. I don't know. It's hard. I don't know what I would do. It's just hard. <laughs> and so that's your scariest. With Clara, it yeah. was the uncle story, how to get over it. And I want to be left alone. And then dealing with the very painful fiance's death. Fiance's death with you, the scariest part is... My parents are older. Mom loves her cigarettes. Um, and, you know, she's getting older. I mean, 60 is old. By the way, I'm 56, so fuck off on 60 years older. I'm teasing. When, you're not, when you're not healthy. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. I'm teasing. Um, yeah. And uh, But the, the scariest part is that basically it's expected per mom that it's going to fall in your lap. And then you say in your write-up, you know, uh, I love them both. I love them. I do. Referring to your parents and your and your brother. Why do I resent my mother when she burdens me by his care at her death? I think you sort of answered your own question. You resent your mother because since you were a boy, you were given something, you were burdened with something that it's not her right to burden you with. You have no obligation. You have no, listen to me, you have no obligation to take on anyone else's burden. Your children... You took that burden on voluntarily. You signed up for it, and I have no doubt you'd sign up for it 100 times till Tuesday. You'd do it again every time. Okay. You did not sign up for, and it is not fair. It is not right. It is not okay for anyone else to place their burden on you. It's not. Well, some people, to which I'm sure a part of you says, yeah, but, you know, it's my brother or whatever. Yes, no? I'm torn because I... Uh... Not that being in a home is like being in jail, but no. I know how institutions are because when I was younger, I was a hooligan and I did some time in the county jail. And Well, a county jail is a little different. <laughs> you know, a hooligan then jail is a little a different from, yeah, a, a home. I know. And there are, and just for the record, just for the record, as former clergy and as a person who is, 
Yeah, I grew up in nursing homes as a preacher's kid, and you know, we go and sing. And I grew up around old people. I grew up in nursing homes, home for the disabled, uh, and so on and so forth. And there are a lot for as all the bad stories you hear. There are a lot of great people doing a lot of great work to and loving and compassionate work in in the interaction with old people, in the interactions with the dying, in the in hospice, in the interactions with disabled. Okay, so that being said, back to you. Is it your burden, Anthony? Is it my burden? On it, I know the answer is no, but I still feel that guilt. Guilt. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Right, guilt. And the guilt is what? Put it. Put a sentence to that guilt. I feel guilty that... I would put my brother away if I had to take care of him. Fair enough. Let me ask you this. Is it that you feel guilty that you would put your brother away if you had to take care of him? Or is it that you feel guilty that you want to put him away? Both. And which is bigger? The want to. Yep. And why is the feeling, why shame yourself for a feeling? Even if you never act on it, let yourself have the feeling. And when you're journaling, even if it's bullet points, I don't want to take care of him. He is not my responsibility. Fuck you, mom. Fuck with a a massive capital fuck you with the more capitals. Fuck you. How is this me? All right? No, 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 no. Just out of curiosity, before we go to commercial here, uh, Anthony, in this lifetime, other than your obligation to your own spirit and your own soul, who is your highest obligation to? Both my daughters. Thank you. And we'll be right back after this short break. My best friend made me listen to some podcast, said it had blown her away. So we listened to a lightning round of the Badass Counseling Show together. All I can say is, wow. First podcast I had ever listened to. Now it's my addiction. If you haven't done it yet, you need to subscribe to the Badass Counseling Show. This show provides soul counseling intended to entertain and inform and is not medical advice. Now, back to the badass. Clara, for what person in your life do you hold, if you're to be totally honest, and I know you are being it, so keep up the good work, for what person in your entire life do you hold the highest level of rage? My uncle or my aunt. (laughs) Pick one. No right or wrong answer. I want to say my aunt. Wow. And yet when I asked you about what's the scariest thing in your whole life about going into, if there were something of you talked about, I feel like I'm stuck in my healing process, don't know how to go deeper. And I asked you, well, what might be the scariest part? Because the scariest part is usually where we need to go. And it's like, I don't want to fucking touch that. Too scary. I had a client just this afternoon. And the fear was looking at the real shit that my dad and mom did to me, this gentleman, that was his fear. Everybody has fears. And so for you, is it the fear? You said the greatest fear was looking at the uncle stuff. And yet you say here, you have the most rage at the aunt. Explain the difference for me. I feel angry with her because she has always said that, you know, I am like her daughter. She's like a mom to me. And she's, when I talked about becoming a CNA, she was the reason why, like she was somebody I was wanting to make proud because she is a um, nurse assistant or not a nurse assistant, a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of always looked up to her. We have a good relationship and, or at least I thought, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I just thought that she would believe me or take my side, but I was wrong. And what does that cause you to think of her? I think she's a coward. Fucking A right. Protected herself at the expense of you, at the expense of the story and truth of a little girl. And so you've been like a daughter. Do you feel like she's like a mother to you anymore? No. Right. Would a mother ever do that? I hope not. (laughs) Right, right. Um, and so let me ask you, and this may be a hard one to answer, but why are they still in your life? And I'm not scolding you. I am not scolding. I'm just asking an honest question. They're in my life because they're family, (laughs) I guess. And and I do love, I do love her and 
she she is my mom's sister. It's just hard. I don't know. What when, would it, okay? Let me ask you this, because uh, they're family, and I do love her. Um, when you say because it's family, what really does that mean? Well, let me let's start with this. Let me just start with this. Whether or not you ever act on it, okay? We're just talking. There is no expectation of action because I'm not in your shoes. I can't tell you what to do. You got to do what feels right to you, right? Okay. So, but let me ask you this. What do you most want to do? Not what do you most want to have or have someone else do? What do you most want to do? And you don't have to do it. I just want to know what it is. I don't really want to have anything to do with either one of them. Okay. So, um, and he's over at your house like most Saturdays or every Saturday knocking on your door. Um, I'm just asking a question. I'm not pushing to action. Why not get a restraining order against him? Because I'm too nice, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Or that, I'm scared. Okay. And that, those are honest answers. What's the fear? Do you fear someone's judgment if you do? Fear criticism from family? What's the fear? I fear that my aunt would be upset with me or that my uncle would get angry with me if I were to do that. And your aunt upset or your uncle angry. Okay. And that is a legitimate fear. I'm going to push you just a little bit, not to take an action. I'm not going to push you to take an action, but I'm going to sort of nudge you a little bit. Are you choosing fear of them over what you need to do for you? Yes. How does that feel? Give me a feeling word. It makes me mad at myself. Yep. Now it's understandable that you're choosing fear. You want to be safe. You don't want anyone to hurt you or be mad at you, right? Or say mean things. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. If you want to keep making that choice, hey, I support you 100%. You got to make the choice that feels right for you. But I also know that if you ever chose, if you ever chose to stand up for yourself, get a restraining order or tell them both, stay out of my life or I will get a restraining order, or whatever it is, that if you ever did that, that would be a powerful statement by you, to you. I matter. I'm not going to live in fear anymore. What would that feel like? Apart from the fear of, oh, them backlashing and so forth, what would it feel like to stand up for you? It would feel good. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, if your aunt got mad at you, and if your uncle got upset with you or got angry, if those two things happened, then what? Specifically, I'm going to ask you a hard question. If she got upset and if he got angry, it's an ugly question. It's a very ugly question, but it's an honest question, all right? It comes from a good spot. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. If they did those things, would you kill yourself? No. Well, why not? Because... I'm a fighter and I'm not going to let somebody else take my life. Fair. Or right. define my life for me. That's fair. So then if you wouldn't kill yourself, pills or a knife or whatever, then what, if they did those things, well, then what? I would be sad if I never talked to my aunt again. Of course, of course. Um, I'd be happy if I never had to talk to my uncle Amen again. Amen <laughs> to that. And, and then what would you do? Finally be free. Ah. So you're telling me then life would go on. That even if she mm -hmm. got upset and even if he got angry, life would go on. Mm -hmm. hmm. Is that a bit of a revelation? A little bit, yes. Because <laughs> I imagine a little bit it feels like life would end if that happened. That would be too painful, too much, too much, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And yet you said, I would finally be free. So are you telling me then that you have the power to set yourself free by standing up for yourself? Yes. How about that? Do you think you have, what percent of the courage that would be necessary to do it? What percent of that courage do you think you have? I'd say probably 25%. That's an honest answer. That's an honest answer. Do you want to know what makes courage grow? And I'm coming to you next, Anthony. Do you want to know what makes courage grow? Pain. Pain. The misery of living this shit. The misery of having to wonder, is today, is he going to knock on my fucking door again today? The misery of thinking about, you fucking bitch. You betrayed me. 
So the more you allow those feelings, the more your courage grows and the more, and this is the grand underrated thing of self-help work, the more your clarity. Clarity. You know what it's like to know your path, to know what you want to do next? Because you talk about, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. And what mm -hmm. I think, Clara, I think your fear is pointing the way. The scariest part in healing, the parts you haven't touched yet, that's pointing the way. You're not stuck. Mm -hmm. You're resting. It's like you're walking up a side of a mountain and then there's like this fork in the road, which way should I go? But there, And you're tired, but there also happens to be a bench there. And you're like, oh, hell yeah. I, I, bench, please. And you're resting. <laughs> and you're resting. Sort of gathering, summoning your courage and, and your clarity. Yeah. Anthony, coming back to you, what is it you most want to do in this whole equation? You have a special needs brother. You have a mom who has who thinks it's her divine right to place that on your shoulders for the rest of your life. You say, why do I resent my mother? Um, do you not know the answer to that question? Well, it's because of that. I know that now. Of course. Of course. Okay, I just want to make sure among, we're clear on that. Go ahead. Among a lot of other things that, thanks to your book, thank God I found your friggin' Instagram reels a couple months ago. Uh, you know, I've been in therapy since I'm 18 on and off, and we I made strides with anger and blah, blah, blah. But honestly, doing the journaling and having the tools that, the book teaches tremendous amount of, like you say, that carryover piece, yeah. right? That carryover high. Yeah. Since I started, has been at an all time high. And the anxiety is like gone. The anxiety is gone. And just for those who don't know, I talk about in the book how we're all in our own ways looking to get high. Better job, new career, more money, uh, another child, um, uh, a new husband, whatever it is, we're all looking to. Ha may get high, but we use things like drugs, gaming, overworking, overparenting, booze, pills, you know, um, staying busy, all these things. And all of those highs come with a hangover. They all come with a crash. And what we're all really seeking is a high with a carryover, a high that lasts, a high, so to speak. And what Anthony is saying, if I'm hearing you correctly, is that because of the work you've done, so much of the burden has been shed and you have a higher baseline, you're living lighter, freer. What yes. for you in doing that work, particularly regarding your mother, what was the biggest insight for you? She took my voice from a young, young age. And how did she do that above all else? Spoke for me mm. constantly, even if it wasn't how I felt, wouldn't even ask me. Mm. Uh, keep the peace my mother walks on eggshells to appease all her brothers and everybody hmm. at the cost of her husband, my father, me and my other son or her other son. I'm sorry. And so mom, but, had, um, mom had the power over dad then. Oh, still. Okay. And so she took your voice. So it is, isn't any wonder you did all that rebellion shit in your teen years. Cause Oof. You know, you're wanting attention and so angry that you weren't seen, right? I mean, does that seem reasonable? That, and I, I, I hate to bash my mom, but she made me so insecure. The shit she would, like, reveal to, about me to every, I couldn't trust my mom. I still can't trust my mom. I can't tell her shit. She'll tell everybody. And so let me ask you, what would it take for you, let's say she passes away tomorrow, knock on wood, I'm sure it won't happen, but gets hit by a car, pass away tomorrow. What would it take for you to go against the wishes of your deceased mother who placed that burden on you and expected you to do it? Do you have the, would you defy your deceased mother? Honestly, in my gut, I know I probably would now How because I know the, the alternative would be, which I've done my whole life, extreme giver, married an extreme taker, divorced. I would have to live for everybody else and not be fucking happy, be miserable and angry all the time. And you have a, you mentioned the obligation before the break to your daughters. You have an obligation of to course. teach them happiness, to be there for them, not so consumed in all your own feelings, et cetera, et cetera, right? Especially because they're getting that counter message from their, it's hard you you that's what brought me to you too is extreme takers because i was with one for seven years <laughs> yeah 
And, uh, yeah, man. And, and the thought this, like I said, this came more recently. Would I do this to my kid? If I had a kid with special needs, would I put it on my other kid? Usually the answer is crystal clear. You say clarity, right? Right. Absolutely fucking not. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in this whole equation, as it exists today, this whole equation of your life, what is it in one sentence or less you most want to do? You don't have to do it. I just want to know what it is. Sounds selfish, but it's pretty simple. Just live a peaceful life and do what I need to do for me. And what most needs to happen in order for you to do that? What do you most need to have happen or make happen in order for you to live a peaceful life? It's as scary as it is because I never knew how to deal with confrontation. I have to speak my, vo my, my voice. I have to, whether it's taken or not, I need to get it out there. Claire, and, and go ahead. Finish up, Anthony. Sorry, put, go ahead. Put the boundary and enforce it and not just back down, back down, back down. Clara, ring any bells? Absolutely. <laughs> what do you think? Because we were literally just talking about that exact thing with you, weren't we? Mm -hmm. As you hear Anthony saying that, what goes through your head regarding your story and your life? I just need to stick up for myself. But it's scary. And stop it's being scary. so nice. It's scary. Can I say? I'm sorry to interrupt. It is scary. But if you don't do the, the scary thing, you'll always feel uh, you won't be at peace with yourself. Understood. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and, and you're absolutely right, Anthony. Uh, Clara, so I'll, I'll ask you again. In the whole equation of your life as it exists today, that the person who molested you as a child knocks on your door every Saturday. Right. Anthony's shaking his head. I'm just like angry. Not at you, Claire. Not one ounce. I'm angry at anyone knocking on your motherfucking door. I'm angry at him. I am angry at your aunt. I am angry. Mm -hmm. All of us want to jump in and <laughs> pound the shit out of the guy, but all of us want to be there on Saturday morning and say, get the fuck <laughs> off the lawn, motherfucker. All right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Anthony knows. All right, so Clara, but it doesn't matter. In the end, it's scary. It is scary, mm -hmm. and you have every right to be scared and there is no expectation of action. And there's no rush. If you ever do choose to act, it's okay. So don't you dare shame yourself for, quote, unquote, not acting or anything like that. You said you had 25% courage when it comes to this. And the 75% is fundamentally fear of what? What does it all boil down to? I guess fear of him. <laughs> fear of him. Can I ask you a, a, a question? And that is... I don't know where you live and you don't have to say where you live, but I want to ask, have you ever thought about reporting it to the police? I have, but I just kind of felt like it's been so long. Who would believe me? You know, mm -hmm. it's been, I don't even know how long, 25 years or so, 24 years. I don't know, something like that. And let me ask you this. If you reported to the police, do you need someone to believe you? Do you know that it happened? Yes or no? Yes. Do you need someone to believe you? Maybe you do, and that's okay. I'm just asking. No. Hmm. Fair enough. Let me ask you this. As a CNA, certified nurse assistant, okay, honorable work. One of my brothers is a nurse. His wife is a nurse. Mad respect for nurses. Right, saltiest people of the world, but I love them to death. And uh, <laughs> let me ask you this. If you were at work one day and you happen to be out in the hallway and you just finished chatting with one of the other nurses and you were just looking at a chart or something and a woman walked up to you, let's say she looks about 40. She said, Miss, I, I know you don't know me, but you've been taking care of my mother. And um, I just need to tell somebody. And... Uh, my uncle molested me when I was about 11. What would your response be? I would tell her that I'm sorry. <laughs> hmm. So you'd believe her? Absolutely. 29 years later. Mm -hmm. hmm. So you would believe someone. Is it reasonable to assume that there are others out there who would believe you as well? Yes. Anthony, do you believe her? Uh, absolutely. I do too. 
Rob and Casey are both nodding their heads. Time doesn't matter. And I'm not pushing you to file a police report. I'm not, Clara. I'm simply saying that this is your story and it is true. And so I guess what I'm saying is if you come to a point where you want to report it to the police or want to file a restraining order or both, there are good people there and a lot of people who have experience with sexual abuse and a whole lot of police do nowadays. And I know a whole lot of fucking good cops in this world. And I know a whole lot of departments have good people who specialize in this that you might be surprised by the answer. You might be surprised because a lot of times it doesn't come out for decades, but it doesn't make your story any less. So, in, right. and so in all of this, Clara, um, I know I asked you, but I, I want to ask you again, what do you most want to do or what do you most need to do in all of this for you, whether for your healing or for your safety or for your peace of mind or for your pocketbook or for anything? What do you most need to do for you? Completely cut him out of my life. And what would be the price? My cousins might not have anything to do with me. That's right. Is or that, my aunt. Or your aunt. <laughs> oh, it's pretty much safe to assume she wouldn't at this point. She's already shown her right. shown her uh, her stripes. And what would that be like to lose your cousins, your aunt, and your uncle, although no loss on losing him? What would it be like to lose your cousins and your aunt? It would be painful because one of my, I, he has, they have two boys. Um, and my oldest cousin, he's like my brother, pretty much. Mm. I only have, I only have one sibling. So they're kind of like my little brothers. Uh. I actually told him first. Wow. What was his, his response? His, he's just said he was sorry and he was just kind of blown away. And then he turned around and told his dad. <laughs> okay. How long ago was that? Just out of curiosity. I think like back in April or May, somewhere around so there. So this is recent. So he told his dad. And have mm -hmm. you talked with that cousin since then? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the conver and has he changed his tune that he feels bad for you? Has he gone into defense of dad? What would you guess is his position? I mean, we still we talk about other things, but like one day I happened to mention that, oh, your dad came over today and you know, he knocked on my door, but I just didn't want to talk to him. And he was basically defending his dad and saying, well, he just wants to come over and visit. He's not trying to do anything like that to you. Like basically defending his dad, right. like taking his dad's side. Right. And so I just kind of steer clear of that whole topic anymore with him because right. it's a touchy subject. It clearly is. And for me. <laughs> yeah. And for you more than anyone. And the truth is, yeah, it's probably going to cost you four people. One, you don't mind losing your uncle walking away from, but mm -hmm. it's, Probably you need to assume, as I tell my own kids, hope for the best, plan for the worst. You got to assume that they're, you're going to lose them. Let me ask you: Would it, if you ever chose to do that, and there's no pressure, would it still be worth it? Yes. Yes. Hmm. Because. Because I just want to be free. I don't want to deal with him anymore. I want to. I don't free. ever want to see him ever again. That's exactly right. And the truth is, it ain't going to happen until you make it happen. And I'm not trying to be a dick by saying that. But it, it'd be nice if people would just do the right thing and stay the fuck away. But we already know he doesn't do the right thing. And so that means, you know, we spend so much time in life, we've all done it, wanting someone to sort of save us, whether it was as mm -hmm. children or even as adults. And no one's coming. And then we realize, fuck. I got to save myself. And that's when you change really from being a young woman to being a woman. When you right. finally save yourself. And I got to tell you, Clara, uh, <laughs> I respect the hell out of you. And I believe in you. And I don't think it's a big stretch to say roughly the same for you, Anthony. Of course, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. 
no doubt about it. Uh, final question. Any final questions for me, Clara? I'm going to ask you guys to come back after the show for a little overtime, but any final questions for me, Clara? I just want to say thank you. <laughs> oh, I know. And I wasn't fishing for that at all. I mean, it's very gracious. No, but, I know. And, and what's still stuck in your head, if anything? What are you still chewing on that's unresolved? I just feel like my whole life I've put my own feelings aside because I, I did tell my mom, not when it happened, but I told her when I was a teenager mm -hmm. and I still was kind of like, it was just kind of like, she said she was sorry that that happened, but I still had to be around him at family functions and. Uh, oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. To be one big, ha you know, for Christmas or whatever. And I never wanted to confront him because I didn't want the, I didn't want to cause drama, you know, in my family. So your <laughs> mom didn't protect you, didn't keep you safe, didn't pull you away from family, shit like that. No. Let me guess. It was mom. It, it was mom's brother. No, it's her brother-in-law. But okay, so it's mom's sister. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. So mom protected family, quote unquote, over. Her daughter. Gotta ask the question, Anthony, for you personally, who do you hate most? The uncle, the aunt, or mom? Mom. Clara, <laughs> Clara, let me ask you. If you hate anyone, I don't want to put words in your mouth. If I now make the choice the same that I just gave to Anthony, who do you hate most? Mom, aunt, or uncle? There's no pressure. I just want to know your truth. I got to say mom, exactly. because I would never exactly. do that to my daughter. Exactly. What are you feeling right now, Clara? I feel sad and mad at my mom. And sad that what? Just sad that she never protected me or tried to stick up for me or keep me away from him. Because she's too scared to stick up to him herself. And what would she, what did she fear happening or fear losing if she stood up for her daughter? Her sister. Right. And her sister walking away or her sister getting mad at her or what? Probably both. Right. So she protected herself in her own interests and her relationship with her sister over her daughter. Now, the both of you have daughters, and I think you both see with vivid clarity how massively fucked up that is. Well, I want to invite you to come back after the show, please, Claire. Will you do that? Yes. And Anthony, may I ask you to come back after the show? Absolutely. I'd love it. Thank you both for coming on the show. Uh, Rob, I want to give you final thoughts. Uh, looking for a, a theme here, I think it's simply I want to be free. They both said that, exactly that, that it took their own action, it's, or it's going to in Claire's case, to be free. Well said, Rob. To all of us tuning in, all of you tuning in to our show from around the world, once again, I think I speak for you when I say uh, we have immense gratitude for these guests and sharing their story. And um, thank you for all for tuning in to the show. On behalf of my colleagues, Casey and Rob, have a kick-ass day. The Badass Counseling Show is strictly copyrighted. No copies may be made without the express written consent of the Badass Counseling Show, LLC. The Badass Counseling Show is produced by Karen Camparelli and Robert H. Friedman. Executive producer Sven Erlinson. Original music by two-time Emmy Award-winning composer Trevor Morris. Have a kick-ass day.